uh, we have Denison Mines um, and the president and CEO, David Cates, to tell you about why uranium justifies John's optimism. All right, well, no doubt that that was a perfect setup uh, for what we're going to talk about next. Um, you know, the reality on the uranium business and all these commodities is that they are definitely cyclical. Um, one way I, I look at these as an investor is that uh, it's, a, it's always a bear market that will give birth to a bull market. Uh, there is no better commodity from looking at which commodity is in a real bear market than uranium. Uh, we're at 13-year lows from a price standpoint. Uh, we are seeing fundamentally the right things happen in our space, as John just mentioned here, with massive curtailments from our largest, highest grade uranium mines. These are things that really should be getting investors engaged about the space. But I'm going to talk to you about, uh, in the next 10 minutes here, are two different stories. Uh, the first one is Denison Mines. It's a uranium development exploration company focused in the Athabasca Basin in northern Saskatchewan in Canada. This is home to very, very high grade uranium deposits, the highest grade uranium deposits in the world. We're talking about grades that are in the, uh, you know, 18, 20% range compared to the average uranium mine that would struggle to reach 1%. Uh, that's what makes Ath the Athabasca Basin so special. That's why we're there. The second story is uh, a company called Uranium Participation Corp uh, that holds physical uranium, very much like a uranium ETF. So let's, let's jump into it. And of course, uh, we're, we're here. So uh, if you do have follow-up questions, come visit us or make the most of a meeting if we already have one booked. All right, so we are gonna jump straight to a video, if that uh, works. And I'll just sort of narrate a little bit as we go through this, just walking through our flagship asset in the Athabasca. Company is TSX listed and New York listed, $350 million market cap in, in Canada. That's northern Saskatchewan. That's where our assets are based. Here's a zoom into that area called the Athabasca Basin. What you'll see here is we're plotting the landmarks in the region, the MacArthur River Mine, Cigar Lake Mine. Those are the two largest uranium mines in the world. Our flagship here, Wheeler River, is located on that Hall Road and along the provincial power grid that connects MacArthur up with the Key Lake Mill where they process all that ore. And we've got two deposits on the property, the uh, Phoenix deposit and the Griffin deposit. I'm going to zoom into the first one here. Uh, Phoenix is exceptionally high grade. This deposit averages 19%, 70 million pounds in the indicated category. You'll see here Zone A has a 59.9 million pound core at over 43%. Uh, that's not a typo, it's just ridiculously high grade. Zone B, similar sort of scenario with a high grade core. We're going to move three kilometers away. Uh, into this really competent basement rock that hosts our Griffin deposit. Uh, we've got a series of stacked lenses at Griffin. Uh, the A lens hosting the majority of mineralization as uh, followed by B, C, D, and E lenses. Altogether, you're gonna see about 62 million pounds at an average grade at just shy of 2%. Again, 2%, very high grade for any commodity you're gonna look at. Uh, it just seems like it's low grade next to 19 or 43 percent. Altogether, 132 million pounds indicated, 135 million pounds um, combined, indicated and inferred. This is just a tracking of our resource growth on the property. Uh, right now, we rank as the largest undeveloped uranium project in the eastern Athabasca Basin, surrounded by all that infrastructure from Cigar Lake and MacArthur. So that's a quick overview on the project. Uh, you know, our story here is not just about having an exploration asset. This is a development asset. Uh, we're really positioning our company to be a developer in this uranium cycle. We believe the bottom is in. We believe things are moving in the right direction. And we think developers or nearer-term producers offer the most torque for the investors. But the reality is that there are many uranium projects uh, in the world. There are many in Canada. There are many in Africa. Uh, but not all of them are destined to actually be developed. And so that's why we've put together this development scorecard, really just to highlight the, um, the fact that our project at Wheeler River is a believable asset to be built in this cycle. We own a 22.5% interest of the McLean Lake Mill. McLean Lake Mill exists today. It is operating today. It is licensed for the next 10 years. 
right now it's processing 100% of the ore that's coming out of the Cigar Lake mine. Okay, it's a real asset. We own 22.5% and it has excess license capacity right now. Okay, so that is a big tick for this project. You saw the power line, you saw the haul roads in that video. We are on the, we're basically on Main Street in the Athabasca Basin. Uh, we have a very large inventory of measured and indicated pounds. 97% of our resources have been brought all the way to indicated. That's important because of the last bullet down here. Uh, we're on a short timeline right now to completing a pre-feasibility study. You can't do that with inferred resources. You need that extra confidence in your indicated resources to get there. Um, we're, we're showing that we're serious about moving this asset forward by taking it to pre-feasibility. And with that, we can make a determination as to whether we would start permitting. And the reality is permitting is the longest lead item in the Athabasca Basin. This is potentially a three or four year project to permit. And that's a short time because we're not looking at building a mill. Uh, and that's part of why our CapEx is number one of the undeveloped projects in the region because we're looking to leverage our existing interest in the McLean mill. I can tell you that that mill, uh, we could put the uh, receipts together on that mill. Uh, we've put between 900 million and a billion dollars as a joint venture into that mill. Um, so it's not a small feat to build a mill in this region. Our CapEx is coming in around half a billion dollars from our uh, PEA study. It's about two years old, that number. Uh, but it's only that low because we're not building a mill. All right, so let's paint a picture of what Denison might be in the market and what we're really trying to achieve here is we're trying to claim a, a massive void in the uranium market. When you look at what you can invest in, there's very little that you can invest in uh, that has a developer or producer angle. Uh, you've got Cameco as a five or six billion dollar company. And then if you drop down to look for the next producer, you're investing in $100 million companies operating in the United States with small scale. What we're showing here is that Wheeler River, if it were producing in 2017, would produce between six and seven million pounds a year and would be the fifth largest uranium mine in the world. The rest of these assets, you can't really buy exposure to, other than Cameco through Cigar Lake and MacArthur. The rest of these assets are owned by Kazatomprom, which is state owned, or Uranium One, which is owned by Rosatom in Russia, um, or I suppose Olympic Dam, but uh, if you're buying BHP, you're not getting uranium leverage, that's for sure. All right, so just to wrap up quickly on our company, and I do want to, uh, of course, invite everyone to follow up with us, but Wheeler River is part of our story. The McLean Mill is an important part of our story. We are generating cash flows right now uh, by managing Uranium Participation Corp and through an environmental services business we have in Northern Ontario and Canada. And we have a massive exploration portfolio, so you're always going to have that discovery potential and optionality in our stock as well. Uh, in the next few years, or in this, this year, in terms of what you have to look at for company-specific catalysts, we have an aggressive exploration program at Wheeler looking for the next or the third deposit on the property. The pre-feasibility study is queued up uh, to be completed in the third quarter, and we're exploring at two of our other uh, high priority pipeline projects. So you always have potential for an exploration success uh, news flow coming out of our company. All right, so with that, I wanna use the last minute here to talk quickly about Uranium Participation Corp. Uh, this company is a very simple company. Uh, it exists to provide investors with pure commodity exposure to uranium. Uh, Denison, of course, is a uranium development company. You have resource and mining risk associated with that company. You also have resource and mining reward associated with that company. Uh, UPC is a company that just holds physical uranium, right? Uh, we are a corporation, but in many ways we're akin to like an ETF for uranium. We are publicly traded on the TSX, uh, and the relationship between the two companies is that UPC has a contract with Denison to manage the company. So Denison's using its industry connections uh, its industry pedigree to basically facilitate the purchase and holding of physical uranium in UPC. This is the slide that you need when it comes to what's in UPC. Well, it's physical uranium. We hold uranium in two forms, U308 and UF6. UF6 just being one step further along in the fuel cycle. Uh, if you kind of e equivalentize everything, we'd have about 16.6, 16.7 million pounds U308 equivalent uh, out of the ground in a storage facility somewhere in the world, totally de-risked. Uh, we'll trade basically 
at a premium or discount to our net asset value because of the fact that we are a corporation. Uh, we are not an ETF. So we do not have the ability to take inflows right in and buy uranium. Uh, so uh, because of that, we'll sometimes trade at significant premium. On the flip side, we have traded at discounts. Makes it a very interesting proposition, but fundamentally the story here is pure exposure to the commodity. Every share has a notional entitlement or, or attributable interest in our inventory associated with it, and that will drive the value of the stock. All right, that's it from me. Uh, so unless there's any quick questions, I'll uh, turn it over to the cast here and uh, keep along with the program. All right, thank you.